Today we are going to continue along with factoring trinomials. Okay, so we're still in the same area that we were in yesterday with trinomials. We are still looking at three terms. We are still looking at they need to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we are still talking about the exact same steps. So the process doesn't change. If you knew the process yesterday, you'll be fine today. But now we are going to throw in some negatives. So there are going to be some things that will be nice to sort of learn and understand and know where they're coming from. But just to sort of start us off, I'm going to give you a little cheat sheet that you're going to want to copy down because you're probably going to want to take advantage of this at multiple times when you're factoring these. Okay, so I would just get this copied down into your notes. And I'll explain it here in a second. Can always hit pause if I'm writing faster than you are. Okay, so once you get that copied down, um, we're going to go through a problem here and I'll show you how it comes into play as we go. So let's say we are asked to factor 2x squared, sorry, I'm already writing wrong, minus 13x minus 7. Okay, so we're still a trinomial. We're still in that same form as yesterday. Our steps are the same. So we're going to start by multiplying a times c. Okay, but now when we multiply, instead of just 2 times 7, we have 2 times negative 7. The problem is that when, is when negatives come into play, now instead of just having a factor of 1 and 14, right, to get negative 14, we have a factor of negative 1 times positive 14 and positive 1 times negative 14. So our list instantly gets twice as long. So that's where this little cheat sheet I made for you up here is going to come into play. So for the time being, we're going to ignore that this is negative, and we're just going to start listing numbers that multiply to 14, right? So 1 and 14, 2 and 7, 3 and nothing, 4 and nothing. Hopefully we realize that, that right, there's nothing else, 5 and nothing, 6 and nothing. The next number would be 7, which we already used. What we can then do is instead of then trying to figure out where our negatives go, okay, we would have to understand that. A positive times a negative gives us a negative. So we need one negative and we need one positive, but we also need them to add up to a negative. Okay, so that's where this is going to come into play. So if we look up here, this has a subtraction and then a subtraction. So right, if we sort of go down our list, one, two, three, and four, right, the third option right here has a subtraction followed by a subtraction. So that tells us that we want our left column, our smaller numbers, to be the positives and our right column, the larger numbers, to be the negative. And then we'll go through the same. So 1 plus negative 14. If you need to use a calculator, you can. That will give us the negative 13. And then just like we did yesterday, once we find our set that adds up to B, right, we're going to split this into two pieces, a positive 1 and a negative 14 where these both get x's because that had an x, right? The 7 comes straight down. And then we will go through and we will start factoring by grouping. So we're going to split this in half. Okay, on the left-hand side, 2 and 1 just has a GCF of 1, right? But they do both have the x. The smaller exponent is 1. So now when I divide, I'll have a 2x plus one. If you're struggling with where all these pieces came from, you're going to need to go back and watch how to factor out a GCF. Now we're going to look over here on the right. Okay, so a GCF of 14 and 7, right, is 7, but remember we said when this leading one right here is negative, we also want to make our GCF a negative. Okay, so a negative 14 divided by a negative 7 is a 2x negative divided by negative is a positive one. Now, some of you have already put this together. I've shown you in class. If you can't think of what the GCF is, you can always divide this first number on this side. You can take this number 
and divide it by this number. So negative 14 divided by 2 gives us the negative 7. The x's cancel out, so it has to be a negative 7. And then for our final step, our numbers in front are going together and our common binomial. And there is our answer. So we're just going to look at one more here because, again, the idea is at this point we already know the process of factoring. We're just simply adding in the fact that some of them could be negative. So let's say we have 6y squared minus 23y plus 20. Okay, so to start, we're going to multiply a times c. So 6 times 20 gives us 120. Now, we're going to have to make a list here, which is why it's important that we sort of stick to our process. So we're going to try one, try two, right? Use a calculator if you need to. 120 divided by 3, your calculator will tell you 40. 120 divided by 4, you'll get 30. Uh, 5 and 24. So I'm going to use a calculator to help me speed this up too. This is nothing. Eight, let's see. It's 15. Nine is nothing. 10 is 12. 11 is nothing. Now we need a set that will add up to negative uh, 23. Okay, so again, we need that negative here. So we have a negative followed by a positive. So that's our second line up here. A negative followed by a positive says we need them to both be negative. Everything down here is negative. And then use your calculator to help you add if you need to. But if you put a negative 8 plus a negative 15 in your calculator, that will give you the negative 23. So we're going to split this up into a negative 8 and a negative 15, where those both get y's. 20 is coming straight down, or 6y squared is coming straight down, and then we are going to start factor by grouping. Okay, so 6 and 8 have a GCF of 2. They both have the y. The smaller one is exponent of 1. Right, I'm dividing. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. I'm subtracting the exponents. You can always go back if you forget the info on how to do that. 15 and 20 have a GCF of 5. But again, our leading one right here is negative, which means I have to make that a negative. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative. Okay, now I have my matching binomials, which is perfect. So my GCFs go side by side in one, and my common binomial is the other.